You know, there's a lot of websites where you can get your news, but most of the time it's boring filler and actually shouldn't really be considered news at all. And that is where Fark.com steps in. In 1999, Drew Curtis launched Fark.com, a clearinghouse of weird, funny, and unusual news on the internet. When it began, Fark's page views were about 50,000 a year. Today, they top almost 2 million a day, making it the second largest independent news source on the internet, just behind the Drudge Report. Now, Curtis is moving into the print world with his new book, It's Not News, It's Fark. In it, Drew exposes just how little reporting happens in the 24-hour internet and cable news world. From fear-mongering and media fatigue to celebrity scandals and nut jobs, Drew plots the clear patterns of how news is covered and consumed in this country. Is the majority of today's news empty filler, or does Fark just add funny one-liners to all the serious stuff? It's not Fark. It's the loop. All right, my guest tonight from Louisville, Kentucky, the founder of Fark.com and author of It's Not News, It's Fark, How Mass Media Tries to Pass Off Crap as News, Drew Curtis. Drew, how are you, sir? Hey, you're doing great. I'm a little too sober for my taste, though. I'm going to fix that right after we're done. Well, good, yeah, because you can't discuss the news without a, without a, a little bit of hair of the dog. I it certainly mean, helps. We're bombarded every day with news on the Internet and on the television, and stories seem to be breaking all the time. So, Drew, from my perspective, it seems like a great time for news. Where's the problem exactly? Well, we've kind of got a three-part problem. We've got the 24-hour news cycle, which is basically too long for anybody to cover any fill of the, the entire space. Then you've got the Internet, which tells us that what people are actually clicking on is garbage stories. And then you combine all that with a ratings war, and, and you end up with a giant pile of crap. Well, in Al Gore's book, uh, The Assault on Reason, he lists media patterns that are harming society. And what I love about the way you break down the seven patterns in your book is that they're just they're laughably accurate, but it's it's also kind of sad. And I'm wondering if there's like a particular pattern or, or several of them that you find more troubling or or, or harmful than the others. Uh, there's actually a couple. The one I really don't like is equal time for nut jobs. That comes from the fact that journalists basically there's two sides of the story. You've got to cover it most of the time. But the problem is is that once in a while there is no other side of the story. Like for example, whether or not the Holocaust happened or there was a moon landing or that kind of right. thing. Um, I've got a really uh, scary example of that, actually. The book is funny, so I didn't put this in there, but there's a, there was a study about, uh, in England, they were talking to a lot of the young Muslims out there that they were having, that, where a lot of the terrorist groups were recruiting from, and they asked them, where did you hear about these guys initially? And they said they heard it from the tabloids, because whenever they wanted to go talk to anybody who's in the Muslim community, they'd go get some guy who's the most crazy, nutball, whack job they could locate, right. and they'd, they'd talk to that guy, and suddenly he's a, he's a leader of the community. And, and are you doing that because you believe that they, they need equal time, or are they doing it just to be sensational in that, in that I, respect? I think it's a combination of both. I think the equal time thing is the kind of the caveat that allows them to get into it, and then the sensationalism just takes care of itself. Now, fear-mongering is, is one that I identified with it, because I always laugh when I hear, like, terror in the bleachers, you know, what you, the gaps might kill your baby or something, and it's, it seems like dangling a pair of shiny keys to distract us from other things. But, you know, when, when MSNBC reports that foie gras may transmit mad goose disease... You know, you might call it uh, fear-mongering, but to French billionaires everywhere, that's shocking investigative journalism, Drew. So how do you draw the line between the two? Yeah, well, the problem is, is you can't always know what is legitimate fear-mongering, what isn't. But sometimes you do know. Uh, and to give you an example, uh, one of the, the one stories that I see all the time, just saw it a couple of weeks ago, was what I call, oh, my God, there's bacteria on everything. Right. Basically, there's always some sixth-grade science student will go and, like, take swabs of everything they can in their classroom grow in a petri dish and then it ends up like uh you know and then always compare it to the toilet because the toilet's bad of course and, yeah, yeah, and then you find yeah. out that your keyboard and the door handle have more junk on it than, than your actual porcelain exactly drum. well when was the last time you ever heard of somebody getting killed because they were you know touching their phone too often you know it doesn't happen it, it, it could happen around g4 if there was one place where it would happen <laughs> we are a petri dish of, of nerdity so there's probably several cell phones with all sorts of bacteria on them. But who's to blame then for this, then, Drew? Is it, is it journalists that are lazy, or is it the Americans who just want to consume news that's easy or that, that is sensational? It's a combination of both. The problem is, is that we're consuming news now basically a la carte rather than the way we used to do it. It used to go by Newsweek or Time, and basically you, you consume the entire thing as far as the advertisers were concerned. But now if you go to Newsweek.com or Time.com, you click on a couple articles and that's it. And so they're tracking to see where people are going, and it turns out that they are going to just the most craziest, weirdo stories out on the Internet. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, go to CNN.com, go to FoxNews.com, go to any site that's got a most popular listing. Check out what's most popular. Today, uh, when I was uh, talking, doing some prep earlier today, I pulled up CNN just to see what the most popular story was, mm -hmm. Paris Hilton. 
Paris Hilton. Now, I mean, but should CNN not cover it and perhaps lose those eyeballs? Or in, in the middle of the Paris Hilton story, should they liken it to the Iraq war so people realize there's still bombs being dropped somewhere? Well, I think that's the problem, really, is that you've got to make a decision if you're going to be a news source. Are you going to basically just go all the way over to the crap and then lose all credibility? Right. Or are you going to cover the actual news and then lose all ratings. But I'll tell you something interesting. Uh, it, the, most, the most eyeballs that ever go to any s- stories that are on FARC are when actual real news breaks. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's, right. it's a big deal. Well, I mean, that, that speaks about your readership, I think, in a way that it doesn't speak about CNN's readership. And I, I pride myself on enjoying like an equally balanced diet of FARC or Drudge, the BBC, countless blogs that I think get it right when the major news organizations don't. But when I think about like Americans who are only exposed to one news source or who, vol- who fall victim to those cycles that you talk about, the fear mongering or seasonal stories, I start to worry about the future or perhaps the direction of news and, and, and the way it's covered in this country. And do you get a sense that there's a light at the end of uh, this cookie cutter like media tunnel? Yeah, I think there is. I mean, right now there seem to be a couple of open segments. You've got basically there's no real liberal news channel out there because what Fox did could just easily be done by somebody else. In fact, I'm honestly surprised Fox didn't do a liberal Fox news channel. They mm-hmm. could. I mean, the, the, it's made up already. Well, some would I mean, tell you that that exists and it's actually Comedy Central of all places. Is that well, a problem yeah, as well? Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, actually, you might be right about that, jumping into the gap. And the other uh, is actually like an honest to God, like hard news journalism. You know, uh, I could see a website launching just doing nothing but that. But the problem there is that it doesn't happen that often, and so you end up with a lot of downtime in between, and you have to figure out, you know, what are you going to do? Like, for example, you want to see the most boring news segment on the Internet. CNN's got this thing they call The Wire. And I was looking for it today, and I couldn't find it, but basically it's just basically it's, it's a running news wire of stuff that's coming in all the time mm-hmm. and uh, dry as toast. But it is actually what you would need to know if you wanted to know what was going on. And now, I mean, you, you've sat atop the, the FARC empire for, for a long time. I mean, you've seen these trends come and go. Where does your site fit into all this news craziness? Well, we're actually outside of it because the first thing you see when you come to FARC, it says at the top, it's not news. And we're not really trying to be news. We're just kind of screwing around. But so yet, when, when is, major news breaks, it's what your, your, your visitors are interested in. So aren't, right. aren't well, you sort is. of we filling the gap somewhere? Right. Well, the problem is, is that it doesn't happen too often. I mean, I could count the number of real news stories that came out today probably on one hand. Right. Which is a, is a testament to the AP as well. I want to give you the final yeah. word, obviously, Drew. Best FARC headline ever. What is it? Well, I, uh, it actually kind of uh, was a self-descriptive article. Uh, I always tell people that the humor on FARC is best when you laugh and you're embarrassed about it. And so in that case... The uh, best example of that I have is that Miss Teff, Texas, was hit by a train. All right, Drew, thank you for joining us in the Loop one-on-one. Best of luck with the site and the book. Folks, Drew's book, It's Not News, It's Fark, is available everywhere right now. And uh, it's an eye-opener, so turn it. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.